Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Anyone want to come a little closer? No. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for coming, and I hope that I can teach you something that will be very good for your health. Um, I'm very happy to be here at Lakeland. Uh, thank you for having me. So we're going to talk about some medicine that's very interesting, to me at least. And um, this is about medicine for the individual, because it's really important, because everyone's different, and they need different kind of medicine to make them well. Um, so we're going to talk about what is homeopathic medicine, first of all. Is it scientific? Can you hear me all back there? Because many people think it's not scientific, especially among physicians. They think it's quack medicine. Unfortunately, homeopaths think they're quacks too. I don't know. It's not good. But <laughs> okay, anyway, and does it work? We're going to learn about that, and we're going to learn some remedies that you can use. A lot of people use homeopathic medicine at home for their children and infants. Why? Because it's safe and it's effective. And there's a lot of medicines that, for babies and children that it doesn't work, um, and, and it's not safe when you see a family doctor. There's nothing good. They don't have good options. They just go home and try some saline. It doesn't help, you know. The, patient, the baby's still suffering, and it makes you feel bad. <clears throat> So the important thing to know about before we talk about more about homeopathic medicine, you, you need to understand what the vital force is because that's what really runs the show in, in healing your body. So the vital force is a spirit-like force that's within every living being. And it's present everywhere in the individual and is constantly adjusting to everything that the body comes in contact with. And also internal forces like genetic forces that are within. It's going to adjust to maintain harmony. It maintains harmony so that your body can function and do what, what it needs to do without feeling pain or any disagreeable sensations. But when, when the vital force is off, uh, that means that your vital, when, you're, when, when you have some sensations that are abnormal, it means that your vital force is off. It's a very delicate sensor that's within your body. So, um, so in health, you see this round circle. Well, I can't really point. Okay, there's a, there's a round circle there, and that represents your body structure. It's, it's, fun, it's perfect, and it's harmony with that vital force, that thunder sign that I made there. And when, when sickness comes in by way of things like um, emotions, you know, emotions or diet, environment, trauma or drugs, anything that's going to disrupt the vital force is going to produce some symptoms, signs and symptoms shown by that um, cloud sign. Uh, and that's, that's a pl place where you'll go see your doctor and you say, oh, I have a horrible stomach ache. I just lost my dog. And the doctor's going to do all kinds of tests on you and say, nothing's wrong with you. Go home. Okay, but there's still something wrong because your vital force is out of balance. Your physiology is out of balance. You don't feel good. And then if you just let it go, let it go, let it go, eventually there's going to be some structural problem. But, oh, now we see what's wrong with you. See that little triangle there? That is pathology, something's wrong. <clears throat> so these are the things that can influence your vital force, or your physiology, if you want to call it. But there is intelligence to it, because the body knows when to produce signs and symptoms, because they're there for purpose. So th certain things that can um, affect your vital force as emotions. So if you're with someone who has negative energy, it's going to make you feel a little sick. If somebody keeps complaining, 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 you're going to feel, oh my god, I'm getting sick myself. Okay? <laughs> or if somebody's very positive and happy, you're going to feel good. Uh, so that affects you. Also, the environment affects the sun. If you have too much sun exposure, it, it can make you sick. Uh, even people like they have um, women who are uh, menstruating, at, they, they start menstruating at the same time if they start to live together. See, these are all energy things that affect your body, all this energy. Uh, cold, damp can affect people. Some people get arthritis from it. And then there are the internal signals. The hormone changes, the genetics, all that is going to change your body and influence how it works. And physical forces as well. Drugs, healthy diet or unhealthy diet, and trauma. That will also affect the vital force at, at that energetic level. Uh, and, and also you'll see some physical changes from some of those things too. But the first thing that gets touched is that vital force. So homeopathy is not 
acupuncture, it's not Reiki, it's not herbal medicine, and it's not simply a nutraceutical. It's a specific form of natural medicine. Um, it's dynamic medicine, um, and it touches the vital force because what we use in homeopathic medicine is energy medicine. So, so we're gonna take natural substances and we're going to um, make them, prepare them in a scientific way so that they can touch the vital force. And I'll go over that to understand that because that is the main thing that doctors think, oh my God, that's ridiculous. There's nothing there. How could that do anything? But actually these medicines have been tested in humans, healthy humans. Uh, and, and also what we do with, net, with this um, type of medicine is we, we match the symptom uh, that the person has, look at the whole person, not just that one part, not just that triangle part, but the, that, um, that thunderstorm thing that, the, that you saw, the, the, um, the sensations of the vital force and the triangle, everything about the human we look at. And then we come to a conclusion and find something that's similar in, as what the body's suffering from. I know that's kind of complicated, but we'll get into it. Anyway, it's like sympathy for your symptoms because it's energy and it matches what, what you need, what your body's already trying to express. So let's just look at allopathy. Allo means opposite, pathos is suffering. That's conventional medicine. It gives, it gives you something opposite to what your body's trying to express. Whereas homeo, Homeo in the Greek means similar and pathos means suffering. So you give something similar to your body to support the body, what it's already trying to produce. And why? Because symptoms have purpose. So look at the symptoms up there. You have pain, you have inflammation, you have fevers, discharges, all these things will are trying to get rid of some toxins. So you shouldn't tell the body to shut up for those things because you're going against the body. The body's intelligent. And then ulcers and tumors can have purpose too. You know, certain people release things by ulcers. That's just their genetics. It's just the way they are. And, and some people even wall off. If they have too many toxins, they'll start um, walling them off because um, they don't know what to do with them. And you know, that's, that's why a lot of people get better with diet. Uh, they have cancer. Not everyone though, not everyone, because genetics, because there's something different that you have to know about the person in order to heal. Not everyone's gonna get better with diet, but, but the ones that are just releasing toxins with their tumors, they will get better. <clears throat> so in conventional medicine, symptoms are suppressed. So like say you have high blood pressure, they give you an anti-hypertensive. If you have inflammation, an anti-inflammatory. But this is just suppressing the, that triangle. You take out that, you're just removing the triangle, like you take out the wart, you're just taking out the triangle. There's still something within that, that's out of balance. That's why you got the wart in the first place, okay? Um, so so with, with regular medicine, we're relying on drugs for chronic states, uh, and it doesn't take into account your whole person. So that was just showing you there that when you remove that triangle, question mark, you haven't really cured the person. You haven't really made them well. You made it look good. You could feel good for a while, perhaps. So let's go into um, homeopathy a little more, uh, more detail now about the history. This is Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. He is the founder of homeopathic medicine. Now notice he was an MD and he was born in Germany. He was fluent in 11 languages. He was a very intelligent man. He would not make up a medicine, which is stupid. He had a degree in chemistry. And he spent 50 years of his life investigating the cause and cure of acute and chronic disease. He was dedicated. He wanted to make people well. But during his training, he said, well, you know, there's too much speculation here. Oh, maybe we should try this. Maybe we should try that. There was no science. Uh, and, and he thought also it was very materialistic. They were just um, doing things to suppress disease by doing enemas, bloodletting, uh, purgatives to induce vomiting, all these things. He said, this is weakening my patients. Um, so he, he resorted to just doing preventative medicine because he didn't want to hurt people. Um, so he said, you know, diet's important. We need to make sure they eat healthy to prevent disease. Uh, also, hygiene's important. He actually, he was the one that recommended to sterilize the, the surgical instruments. <clears throat> 
And he also said the environment's important. You know, some people get sick in the damp weather. Some people get sick from too much sun. So he said, you know, watch, let's, let's pay attention why you're sick, what's causing you to be sick. And he also said morality is important, you know, and don't, don't have more than one sexual partner. You shouldn't uh, get angry or, because that's a physiology and that will make you sick. And 11 years later, that's what he was doing, he was mainly writing papers. And he was translating papers because he knew 11 languages. And um, he, he came across a paper about chinchona which is a uh, Peruvian bark. And it's, it said that it was, there's a cure for malaria. And they were saying, oh, it's probably because of some chemical property within. Well, Dr. Hahnemann, he wanted to test this. He said, I'm gonna try some of this medicine. So he took some of this medicine in his mouth and he produced similar symptoms to malaria. He got the same symptoms that it was curing. Each time he took a dose and he did it three different times and he took a break between each time. And why did he do that? Because he wanted to make sure that this medicine was causing these symptoms in his body, right? Otherwise, how do you know? So, um, he, so he came up with a hypothesis. This is very scientific. When you observe something in nature, you want to make a hypothesis and then test it out. So that's what he did. He said, and his hypothesis was that medicine ought to support the, the body, the whole person, because the signs and symptoms are there for a reason. So what did he have to do next? He needed to test more substances, right? So he could have more different kinds of medicine for his patients, <clears throat> using the, sim the principle of similarity. And what did he use? He used things from nature, animal parts, milk of a dog, lacaninum, whole bees called apis, and ink of a cuttlefish is called sepia. Use minerals, salt, copper, gold, plant parts, leaves, stems, flowers, lots of different things in nature that we have to help us, to help us get better. And he set up what, what's called provings. So he, these medicines have been tested in humans, fully tested in humans. We know many, many symptoms that every substance can cause. And these substances can cause all kinds of symptoms. You can, you can take coffee or you can take a flower, right? Or, or a mineral, like a salt, anything. You give it to healthy people. He did it on himself and he even did it on his children. He had nine children and his, and his wife. And, and then his colleagues joined in as well. So this is the experience of remedies given to healthy people. And there's over 200 years of provings uh, now on over 3,000 remedies. That's a lot of medicines that we can give to people to make them well. There's a lot of choices here. It's not just like uh, for your headache, we got Motrin and, and some stronger pain medicines. You know, we got lots of different choices. And you know, drugs will affect all parts of your body. So, and it can have healing or poisoning effects depending on the dose. You know, everything can, can be poisonous and everything can be healing. We just have to know how much to give. You have coffee, it might, maybe a tiny bit of coffee could be good, but if you have too much, you're gonna get a lot of problems. So, um, let's see, and then Dr. Hahnemann wanted to also use the smallest dose that was safe and effective. And he found while he was experimenting that there was a phenomenon that when he diluted the dose, when the substance was vigorously shaken between each dilution, the process rendered the remedy more powerful and, and it can cause more physical and emotional and even emotional effects on humans. So it's not just like, like this kind of shaking, it's like really strong force. Actually he used the Bible, he used it really hard like this. And he said, if you just do it like this, it's not going to do anything. But if you do it hard, you know, we're all made of atoms and electrons, and there's a lot of energy inside of us. And so there's energy inside these substances as well. <clears throat> so this is kind of how they make a remedy. It's just a picture of a, a plant that they would um, crush up in alcohol, and then um, you take one drop of that's That's just like the herb, actually, in that form. Uh, but this is not an herb. This is homeopathic. It's, it's special. So we... we we not only use that herb, we, we put it, take one drop of it and then we shake it a hundred times and that becomes a one C, that powerful shaking. And then you, do it, you can do it again and again and again and again. And so it's more dilute. 
but it's more powerful because they tested these things in humans. And then we can put them on sugar pellets. Just we need one drop for a whole bunch of sugar pellets and boom, it's like fire. It's like when you let, light a match, you can keep lighting more and more and more. That's how this medicine is. It's like electricity. Um, and that, so this medicine is easy to take. It tastes good. It's, that's why a lot of people like to use it for their children because it, it's just like one little pellet. Here, open your mouth, it tastes like sugar. Great, right? That's nice medicine. <laughs> Wouldn't you like that? And then if you want, you can dissolve it in water. That's even easier, okay? So, there, but remember, there's no material dose here, but it's all energy. And that's, you know what? That's the perfect medicine that will touch the vital force gently to influence the body to get back into health. And it can even change physical signs and signs or physical things like warts. It can get rid of warts just by taking it in your mouth. It's very powerful. Uh, so. During these provings, people were supposed to pay attention to every single symptom they had, every part to detail about their symptom, because a lot of medicines can cause headaches, a lot of medicines can cause diarrhea, but what type of diarrhea is it? What type of headache is it? That's what the homeopath will look at when they talk to you. So you don't come up to the homeopath and say, oh, I have a headache, what should I take, doctor? That doesn't work. We need to know what type of headaches, and we need to know about you also, which I didn't get into yet. We need to know their temperament. Um, we need to know something about your genetics, your sensitivities, which I'll talk about. So here's a, an example. This is, uh, let's say, two different types of constipation. So we have sepia, that cuttlefish, the ink of the cuttlefish, which causes constipation in, in this form where you feel a lump or a ball sensation. I had a patient like this. She had this sensation. Uh, and no doctor could help her. She, she went to many doctors. She had colonoscopy. She had the gastroenterologist. She had to live with this kind of constipation. And sepia is the remedy that helped her. Uh, and then there's also there's a, like a podium type of constipation. Okay, so they have to have loosen up their belt, and usually uh, they have more pain, maybe distension around 4 to 8 p.m. So there's the sepia cuttlefish, and there's the lycopodium. That's what, that's what we use. Of course, it's on those little pellets. And uh, so, so these provings that they did was to know the whole medicine and all the effects in humans to be able to match the state of the remedy with the unbalanced state in the sick. And they put all these provings, these human provings, in the book called Materia Medica. And not only that was in the medical, not only the provings, but also cures were, were recorded in here. Um, so if, it, if you have a pr proving symptom, they would do it not only once, they would do it three times to make sure that that symptom was caused with that remedy. And then on top of that, they had to show a cure for it to, to be in this book. And then um, the cures, oh, during the provings also, some people would get cures. So they would take a medicine, a remedy as a, as a proving. They were trying to test it out. And in the meantime, they've had this problem for a long time. And oh, it went away. So that would also be recorded in the book. And then, um, yeah, that was it, okay. Uh, so, so after these provings were done and, and Dr. Hahnemann tested it on many people, the light cures like principle, he used it to cure his patients. He said, now I can say that there's a law of healing. It's a law of similars. So the symptoms of the sick are the very symptoms that need support to complete the healing process, strengthening and supporting the vital force. So, um, when you look at a person who's sick, you look at intense characteristics and signs and symptoms. It's kind of like an image of the person. You get an idea of what needs to be cured. Uh, so certain things that we look at is etiology. Let's say ever since you had a certain emotion, you've had a problem. That's what a homeopath will delve into. Uh, we'll look into what kind of person you are, what kind of emotions you have. Are you, are you a kind of person that gets angry easily? Uh, do you jump? Are you jumpy? Are you, or are you very mild and calm? Uh, because that's a physiology. Uh, we'll, we'll also look at where the problem is. You know, if you have a main problem or any problem you have. The main problem we're looking at that you definitely need to cure if it's in the uterus, we'll get a remedy that's for the uterus. There, there are remedies that, that work more for certain parts of your body. And then we look at the genetics of, your, of you, of who you are. Because there, there's unique reactions that everybody has to the environment. Some people get affected by the sun. Some people get affected by cold or damp. So that's what we, we need to talk to you about in an interview. And, um, and then we also need to know, is there 
anything that's making you sick and you're going to continue to be sick if you don't get rid of it, like if your diet is bad or you're around somebody that, that, that's toxic for you. Well, a homeopathic remedy isn't going to fix that for you. So we need to try to find out what we can do for that. So for chronic disease, homeopathy approaches healing in a unique way. It looks at the symptoms that expresses the genetics. Um, we try to understand the personality of the person. Um, and, and then we need to know the characteristic signs of the disease, like I said, the different kinds of constipation, and understand the sensitivities of the person. So we match the remedy, and that strengthens the whole person. Uh, so here are just some ideas of what kind of things a homeopath would look at. Um, the unique symptoms of disease, which we talked about. Mental, emotional chain symptoms, which I said a little bit about. Uh, passions, just if you're discouraged, excited, you have fears, your phobias, that's what I need to look at. The temperature, are you a hot person, are you a cold person? That's a physiology. Um, a certain, some symptoms come on at certain times of day, like some people have a stomach ache every single day at 2 o'clock, or they'll wake up every day at 3 a.m. These symptoms are important. They're kind of like meridians, um, because meridians, the energy goes through a certain part of your body at a certain time, and it can, you can feel a problem more at a certain time. Um, also, if you have a pain like a headache, is it better when you sit? Is it better when you lay down? That's a physiology. Um, do you like exercise, or does it make you exhausted right away after exercise? That's important, too. So go on and on. You, know, you look at the body type, the genes, the personality. There's a lot of things that go into a homeopathic interview. So, um, but you know, there are some easy ways to use remedies as well. And this is by etiology. So this is a lot of the times what people who want to use remedies at home would look at. So Arnica is an excellent remedy. Everyone should know Arnica. Let's see if I have a picture. There it is. Arnica is used for problems that have occurred ever since some trauma. And actually, they found this because while they were doing provings, they had many people maybe that had, I've had this headache ever since I fell, or I've had a, a sacral problem ever since I fell off my horse. And, and these people who were proving the Arnica, they got better. So they said, oh, there's a lot of people here I see that getting better ever since something. There's another one, ever since a grief you have some problem. Ever, ever since you fractured your bone, well, that's more of like a specific um, or organ that the medicine goes to. Ever since exposure to cold wind causing a cold, that's how you would know which remedy to use for these kind of things, this etiology thing, or ever since a fright. So for Arnica, I had one person that um, he, uh, he hit his head and he had a concussion and um, he had memory loss and, and he had headaches. And I gave him this remedy, Arnica, and within a week he was better. He had suffered for this for six months. That's not that long, actually. You can suffer a lot longer with the concussion problems. But that's pretty cool. And then Ignatia is another remedy that ever since a grief. So if you have someone who's grieving, they just lost her, uh, someone they love. Um, I gave this to a, a girl, actually. Her, her, she was with a... A man who was her fiance, and he's, he had to leave her because she actually cheated on him. And she was very sad, and she was crying. She couldn't get over him, even though she's the one that cheated. But anyway, I gave her Ignatia, and she felt better right away. Within a week, she was on to someone else. OK, I don't know if that's good or not, but <laughs> at least got her through it. You know, it's like you're stuck somewhere. You're stuck. You're emotionally stuck, and this just helps to make the process go faster for you. And some people can be stuck for 20 years. And then there's symphytum. Symphytums I used on a guy uh, who had a fracture of his toe. He, his toe wasn't getting healed, and he, he had seen the orthopedic surgeon, and um, you know, some, sometimes fractures are very slow to heal, and he was still having pain, and I gave him some vitam, and the next day he said he felt better. His pain wasn't there anymore, and he went on to heal, of course. And then there's aconite. Uh, aconite is good for a, any exposure to cold wind, so something that happened ever since cold wind. So my son got sick one day. He was exposed to the cold wind, and he got a cold, and he was coughing, and I gave him some aconite, and actually the next day he was better. He was fine. That was cool. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I also gave aconite to another person. It's good for shocks and traumas as well. So uh, this man, he was uh, sitting next to his wife, and all of a sudden she just passed out, and he thought she died. The paramedics came, and he was just in shock after that. And I saw him several weeks later, and he was on Xanax, and he said, I can't take this stuff. This stuff is just making me exhausted, and, and, and I, I don't like the effects of it. And I said, well, why don't you try that aconite? And so he took it, and within a week, he was fine. It was good. So um, this just tells you, basically, you know, homeopathic medicine looks at your physiology. Because, you know, in um, ancient medicine, they would look at these different temperaments that you have. There's a phlegmatic, there's melancholic, there's choleric, and then sanguine. And each of these temperaments, um, call, actually, you're more prone to certain diseases. So, so the phlegmatics are more uh, prone to venous disorders, melancholic to more emotional disorders, choleric more prone to um, gallbladder and liver problems, and the sanguine to, to high blood pressure. So, but no, nobody's like totally only one type. So you might be a little bit of mixtures. But see, this is what homeopaths would look at. What kind of person are you? So we need to ask you, who are you? What, what makes you you? you know, tell me, what makes you different than the other person? Yeah, I know you have two eyes and a nose and a mouth. That doesn't help me. Tell me about yourself. Because there are certain remedies are better for certain people. They work better. So that's why we need to know that. And then we need to know mood, too. If mood is, is important for you, uh, maybe you're just sad, or you're depressed, or you're just, just an angry person. You're just always angry. Okay, we have remedies for that, okay? Because there are certain remedies that will sympathize with those symptoms that you have. Or fearful, excited, anxiety. We, we, we can treat all kinds of things with homeopathic medicine. It's very, very cool. Because these me medicines have brought out states and, and people. Like if you take a cup of coffee, you're going to have a little joy. Okay, you can understand that, right? <laughs> it just made, or chocolate. It makes you feel a little lighter. So that's just one, one thing that, that you can uh, understand. Also, homeopathic medicine looked at the body types. Very lean, tall people had more symptoms on certain remedies. So certain remedies are good for you if you are tall and thin versus if you're overweight. And you, that's just the way you are. And there's that coffee thing. So if I give coffee to everybody in this room, some people will need a small dose to feel jittery and shaky, and other people need 10 cups. Why? Because we're different. So that's homeopathic medicine looks at the dose. How much do you need? So I'll give you a dose, and then I'll have to say, hey, how did you do with that? Did you feel anything? No? OK, then take some more. OK, and that's what they did in the provings as well. They said, you didn't feel anything. Keep taking it until you feel something, and then note down your symptoms. Um, so coffee can have a lot of different effects in this homeopathic dose. This, this was tested in humans. And so there's insomnia. We all know this, right? The mind is talkative. But you may not know some of these other symptoms, fear of death. You know about restlessness, probably. Quick to act. 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 OK. Again. And then uh, toothaches. You may not know about that. Coffee can cause toothaches. Um, and a toothache that's better in cold water. It can cause palpitations, we know about that. Urination, we know that it causes more frequent urination. It can cause head pains as well. And it's best adapted to tall, lean, stooping persons. So see, we know a little bit more about coffee. That, that, that kind of person would be more likely to bring out the symptoms for coffee. And, more, and if you had a problem, it would be more likely that that remedy would help you. So here are some examples of using coffee. Here's a 35-year-old man with severe tooth pain. Okay, he had to keep ice in his mouth, and without the ice, his tooth kept coming back. I mean, his tooth pain kept coming back, and I gave him coffee, and boom, the tooth pain is gone. And it was a sound tooth. It was a tooth that was normal. If, of course, it was decaying and all that, it may not do anything. But it might help with the pain temporarily, but then you'd have to see the dentist. But there are some, because actually your teeth are part of the meridian system as well, and each tooth can represent different parts of your body. Just like your ear represents your whole body as well. Did you know that? Your ear can talk to you. <laughs> if you look at your ear, it has lines, discolorations, grooves, and marks. And we, some people can read the ear and tell you what's wrong. You can also treat your body through the ear. So the tooth is the same way. And there's another example of a six-month-old six who needed coffee. Homeopathic, of course. What is that? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> 
All right, so let's see. So I'm just going through some remedies for you. Arnica. So Arnica is also good for any kind of injuries that you've had in the past. It, it could help. That doesn't mean that Arnica is going to work every single time no matter what. Because this is, you know, just based on etiology. And there are, we have other remedies for traumas as well. So if you don't, but you, if you don't know anything and you want to try, because, you know, I've had this problem ever since I fell down, you could try some Arnica. And you can buy it over the counter. It's FDA approved. You take one pellet three times a day and just see what happens. Uh, and then I had a lady, actually she fell down and um, she heard her sacrum. And I gave her Arnica, and within a week she was fine. She was, had this problem for like a year. I've had other people, 20 years they've had a problem. Some of these remedies can just work, even at late stages. And, you know, the doctors will say, oh, your MRI shows this and this. And, but you know what? That doesn't mean that necessarily that, that this won't help. Because people can have problems on the MRI, and, and they have no back pain. So you can't just go by what it says physically on an MRI. There's always hope, <laughs> okay? And like I said, uh, homeopathic medicines are FDA approved, which means, because you know, they've been tested in humans. They've been fully tested. And, and it's not like those uh, supplements, nutritional supplements, those are not FDA approved. And uh, supplements are used in a completely different way. We just go by um, a physical symptom, like, okay, you have a headache, maybe fever view can help you for these migraine headaches, but it's not individualized, okay? Homeopathic medicine is individualized. It's, it's, it's a lot more powerful, and it's energy. Uh, and this is just a few other remedies here if we have time. Escalus hippocastanum is a great remedy for hemorrhoids, but what kind of hemorrhoids? You have to have a splinter-like sensation in your rectum. Okay, and you might have some constipation with that, with, with some large, hard stools. And you might have some aching in the lumbar or sacral area with some stiffness. So you don't have to have every single symptom of these. It's like you just have to kind of get an idea, like an essence of what's going on with the person. If you feel this, because once you study remedies, you study remedies, you're, oh, that kind of, that looks like that. But homeopaths actually have computer programs where they have all these symptoms. They put them in, then it comes up with a bunch of remedies. And then it's not going to be the remedy that comes up number one, but we're going to like look and we have to know our remedies. We'll, we'll, when we think, oh, it could be that one, let me look at it a little more carefully. Or we'll say, oh, no, that one definitely is not because that person is not like that at all. Or that, that person doesn't like cold wind, so that's not a good remedy for them. That's how we look at it. It, it can be a kind of a complex process. But when you find the right remedy, you're going to not only heal the person that, on that one symptom, you're going to heal them in many, many levels for chronic disease. For acute disease, we can just treat you by one part, one part. But then you're going to have to, if it's a chronic problem, you're going to have to go to see a homeopath to really get a deeper cure. So this is Apis. This is honeybee. And we probably all know what a, a bee sting feels like. And this can be used for um, swelling, especially around the eye or in the urethra where the urine comes out, if there's swelling and urine infection. But it has to be tender to touch. It could be good for a cellulitis or an infection of the eye. Or it could also be good for um, just, in, um, what do you call it, allergy. A lot of people come in with swollen eyes. They wake up in the morning, they don't know what it is. And uh, it's burning maybe and a little bit tender. That apis could be a good remedy to help. And uh, usually it's better from, with cold. You can imagine, like a bee. A bee sting is better cold, right? So it's kind of something in nature. It helps us to know something about nature with these uh, provings. This is a good remedy everyone should know, too. Arnica is good for any kind of contusion, bruise. And Ruta Grav is good if it, you have a bone bruise or, or a, a cyst of the wrist or tendinitis of the wrist. is more specific for wrists, for sprains. It's also good for eye strain. So, but this is just used as an acute. You don't have to know about the whole person. So, you, and you can just follow the directions. Um, you can get these remedies at Whole Foods. Uh, they're usually like five to ten dollars each. Um, they have a l bunch of pellets, and you can try it. So, homeopathy again looks at the whole person, the unique totality of disagreeable signs and symptoms, and. Um, we correct problems at that level of vital force. That's why it's so powerful, and it's powerful because it's energy, it's, it's, it's electricity. So when you have minor problems, try homeopathic medicine. 
for complex conditions, see a classical homeopathic physician. And so here are some things that homeopathy can has has cured. Okay, we can cure lots of diseases. When your conventional medicine fails, we come here. See, I, I was a family physician. I still am a family physician, but I don't practice that way anymore because I found that that it was not good. Um, because actually, in homeopathy, we say that. If you, if you suppress a problem with a drug, it actually goes deeper. Like if you have a skin problem, an eczema, and you put steroid creams on it, the person can get asthma. Some people who are susceptible to it, and that doesn't mean everyone will be hurt by steroids, but some people will be hurt by steroids. And because the body's trying to express something, and you're saying, shut up, and now it's going into your lungs. There's very strong correlation between eczema and asthma. There's a lot of kids like this been suppressed and become asthma. Is that, that's the worst place to be. It's better to be on the skin. So if you come to a homeopath, you get cured with the asthma, uh, and then the eczema will come back. Okay, but then we treat the eczema with with another remedy, and then you're cured. That's a true cure. See, so so with knowing that, how can I practice medicine? How can I keep giving steroid shots to people <laughs> when they come in for uh, sinus problems? It's a Hippocratic oath said, "Do no harm." So I can't continue to harm people. <laughs> I, I don't think that's that's a good thing to do. So. Um, that's why I do, and you know what? This medicine is so much more rewarding because I can actually help people. Before, I would, people would come to me, um, and they would have all kinds of different problems, and I was okay. Go see the, the specialist because you know I don't know. It's, this doesn't make sense. Maybe they understand. They still don't have an answer over there. They come back to me. I don't know what to give them anymore, and they want they want some answers. I don't have the answers, but with homeopathic medicine, I do have answers now because you know what? With homeopathic medicine, you don't need to know exactly what the diagnosis is. You know, you have a diagnosis, great, and now you're stuck with the drug for the rest of your life. That's not an answer to me. I wouldn't want that if I have a chronic illness. I want to get cured. I want to be healthy. I want to be able to be a productive person in this world. So I, that's why I, I believe this medicine is, is a lot more powerful. And even if you have a problem like cancer, sometimes homeopath. actually there are lots of cures in, in homeopathic medicine with cancer. I was just doing a review on cancer cases and they're like one after another. Conventional medicine gave up on them and, and they got cured with homeopathic medicine. That doesn't mean that we'll always find a remedy for you. Sometimes it's hard to find uh, the correct remedy. Um, and you know, just like with Motrin, is Motrin gonna work on every headache? No, it's not. Uh, and so when we do the individualized thing, I have to try to analyze which is good, which is not good. But when you find the right remedy, the person is going to get healthier. And even if we don't find the right remedy for cancer, the person can actually uh, have a better quality of dying uh, because we have remedies for anxiety, for fear of death. It's arsenicum. It's very good. <laughs> and uh, for pain. Uh, so, so that's all I have to say, I think. I also have some books on sale if you're interested in learning about homeopathic medicine. They're used books, $10. And then I have a kit if you want to learn about homeopathic medicine, use it at home. That's $130. Each remedy in the uh, Whole Foods is like 5 to $10 each, depending on what kind it is. Um, so I think that's a good deal. And then it comes with instructions, just little things like what to use for uh, bee sting or uh, cut. Calendula is good. Um, or sore throat, they give you some ideas which you can use and they'll give you a little blurb. But that's why the book is good too, so you can understand that. So this is me, I'm in Mentor, Ohio. If you ever have any chronic difficult patients, uh, problems, please come and see me. Um, you can, I see children, I see adults, I see chronic and acute. I, I think chronic is, uh, is uh, more challenging and fun, but I can do acute as well. <laughs> so if you have any questions, Yes, I have to stay here what because this thing. <laughs> what is the typical uh, healing process? Like, how long does it normally take? Usually, well, sometimes it can take within a, just a week. I had a I had a chronic fibromyalgia patient. She had it for 20 years, and she got better in a week. That's amazing. But the the general rule is for every year of chronic illness, uh, it could take three months. I have an MS patient that she's you know it could be like years for her to get better. So. But you know, each time you notice that you feel better, it's not like take this, you know, like these nutraceuticals. You take take them, you don't feel anything, you don't feel anything, you don't feel anything. You keep taking it, taking it, you don't know what to say. With homeopathic medicine, you will feel better within a week. You will feel something. So we know we're on the right track. 
And with, when I give you a remedy and it, you don't feel like it's doing anything, I'll change it and I don't charge for that. I just, I'll keep working with you until we get something going. If so, something's working, then I'll charge you. If you're not, if nothing's working, I'm not going to keep charging because I, I understand that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, functional medicine, they'll look at lab tests and they'll look at you, a little bit of the physiology, but they're, they, it doesn't, homeopathy is one remedy and it's energy, okay, and then we're matching all your symptoms with known effects in humans and matching the state that you're in. Functional medicine is, okay, this is off, that's off, so let's give you some of this for that and this for that. How do you know that's really going to cure you? You don't. It might, but it's not. And then you have to take those medicines forever. With homeopathic medicine, this is a cure. So you should be better and better. Each time you get a REM, you get a little healthier, healthier, healthier. And then eventually the, you're off of it. The other medicine, you're not off. Okay, so that's the difference. Where do you buy these remedies? Do you have to write a prescription or do we just go to the drugstore? Well, I have um, what's called LM potencies. I think they're more uh, powerful, so I use those. But sometimes I use the ones that you can find over the counter as well. They are over the counter at Whole Foods and at um, GNC. You can find some of them remedies. Not all of them will be there, but yeah. So some of them we would most of, the, most of the common ones that you need are over there. I said they cost about 5 to $10 each. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the remedies are not covered by insurance then. What do you mean? Oh, you mean the insurance would pay for them? Yeah. No, insurance doesn't cover um, these medicines. You know, if, if you rely on insurance for anything, you're not going to get good health. Because <laughs> I don't know why. It seems like insurance companies should want to make people healthier. But they, what they do is they say, here, take this vaccine, do your colonoscopies. You know, it's not really making you healthier. They should know about homeopathic medicine. I don't know. If they knew, I think they would. I don't know. They, unless they're in, you know, relationship with the drug companies and all that. Yeah. I have two questions. Um, have you ever combined classical and homeopathic treatment? Oh, you mean, um, and homeopathic is? energy medicine. So you're home, don't use the word homeopathic now. You want to use natural medicine. So do I combine homeopathy with natural medicine? Yes, I do. I, use, I do osteopathic manipulation and I, sometimes I might give some nutrition if they need. But most of my, 90% of my practice is just giving one remedy at a time because I don't want to sell you a bunch of stuff. I just want to get you healthy. All right. Oh, to these homeopathic remedies? No, because these are energy remedies. So, so things that, this is the possible things can happen with a homeopathic remedy. Either one, your symptoms will get worse. That's actually a good sign. That means you're on the right remedy. So most people take that, oh my God, a headache is worse. I'm never taking that again. Well, that's wrong, <laughs> okay? What you should do is just cut the dose. Next time, don't take so, so much. That means that it's too much for you. And then your, your healing should get better. Um, um, you know, if you're a lay person, it may not work because there are a lot of remedies that could help you get better. But also the important thing is your mental, emotional state should get better. You should feel lighter. You should feel easier. Something You sleep better. You have a better mood. Then we know, yes, this remedy is really good for you. Even though you're suffering more, you, might be, you may have a better mood. That means you're on a good dose. You've got a good medicine, just the dose needs to be adjusted. Uh, so that's one. That's called an aggravation. The other thing that happened is nothing. Nothing. You take a remedy, you feel absolutely nothing. You're not better, you're not worse. So if we continue, I might ask you to increase the dose. If that still doesn't work, then maybe it's just not the right remedy. Another thing that can happen is you might get a new symptom that you've never had before. But with homeopathic medicine, whatever symptom you have is something that was within you. You're susceptible to it because these are energy remedies. So if it's bringing out something in you, it's just something that's part of you. And so, um, it, but that shouldn't really happen, so it might be that we have to choose a better remedy for you, or maybe that's the best remedy we have. And so as long as you're getting better in other areas, maybe we'll just have to deal with that little new symptom. 
Let's see what else could happen. Better, worse, nothing. Did I say better? Oh, better. Yeah, better. Of course. You could get better. <laughs> Completely better. Mind, emotions, and symptoms. Everything got better. So that means we continue you on that dose. I think I got everything. Yeah, so that's what could happen. Did I answer your question? Okay. So it's, there's not as many side effects. There's usually no side effects. Sometimes if there is an eff a side effect, it's probably an effect of the medicine that we just have to maybe get a better medicine for you. That's you all. Can combine them so that you can alleviate some of the, the side effect symptoms? No, we don't do that. No, so they're not we do not them. do that. Okay. <laughs> like we're right, different drugs. So you're going to... No, and I, if you have a complex disease, it might give you a couple of different remedies. For, for, so we'll look at, like, let's say you have, like, um, uh, a different, like, it's, it's, like, completely different, like a, a headache, or, or you had an injury, and this headache was there ever since that injury. It has some something that I know that it's completely, has a different life form from the rest of you, your constitution and everything, then I might give you that remedy for that, plus your constitutional remedy. So, so it'll be something like that. But every remedy is going to have a purpose for, and we're going to match it on several levels. It's not just like, here, you got a headache, take this. It's not so easy. It's difficult work. Okay. <laughs> yes? Do you ever find yourself like peeling back layers of yes. onion on people? Yes. That's what it is. One symptom goes away and another one pops up and another uh -huh. one. Uh-huh. Yeah, so layers can be removed that, that have been in your body. It's possible. But a lot of times, also, I, I just see... Um, a body getting better on many levels at once. I had one lady, she had pains in her legs, chronic neuralgia. The neurologist couldn't figure out. She also had diarrhea. She also had allergies. What else did she have? I think she had headaches. Anyway, when I gave her a remedy, all her symptoms got worse at once. We cut it back. And then all her symptoms got better. That was amazing. I love when that happens. <laughs> you know? Or you do too, probably. Well, you don't like the part when it gets aggravated, but sometimes you're very sensitive to the remedy you need. I bet so other, other remedies could, actually, I gave her a couple of remedies before that because I was trying. Maybe it's this one. That one helped too. They all helped a little bit, but then I found the one that was really helped her the most. But they all can help. That's pretty amazing. You know, it's like juicing. Juicing is healthy. These remedies are juiced. They're energized, okay? <laughs> so maybe something healthy about them helps you. Increases your level of health. Yes. Do you want to say something? Help me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you like? Do you take? Do you do a blood test at all to find diseases or like say uh, cholesterol, high cholesterol? Well, you know, you can do blood tests and you can see your cholesterol's off. You can see your thyroid's off. And then they give you the thyroid drug, and they give you the cholesterol, and you're not any healthier. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't even get better. The thyroid is is better, but you still don't feel well. So no, actually, homeopathic medicine doesn't rely on lab tests. We don't need them because we go by your symptoms. We, you know, are you are you better in the sun? What what are your sensitivities? Emotional sensitivities. Some people get emotional or angry about injustice, okay? So those people are sensitive there. Another person is sensitive to the sun. They get headaches. Another person is sensitive to milk. They get diarrhea. So those are the symptoms I look at, and that's what I match with a remedy, and then you should get better. Even your sensitivities can, get, can go away to milk, to cheese, to all those things. Homeopathy is very powerful, so I don't need lab tests that will lead us astray. But if you have lab tests from your physician and you want to bring them in and see the before and after, that's fine. But really, the main thing is how do I know you're healthy? By if you know if you feel healthier, that's that's important. But there are some things that you may not be able to pick up, so it would be good to have a lab test. Your like your cholesterol. How are you gonna know your cholesterol is better? But you know there are some people who have high cholesterol and have never had a heart attack. So, you know, how are you going to go by that? <laughs> like, I have high blood pressure, but I don't feel bad from it, but my doctor right. said I have to take this medicine to bring my well, blood pressure. Well, it is so not healthy to keep your blood pressure high all the time, <laughs> so I agree with that. But maybe there's a different way to make your blood pressure um, go down without that drug by looking at the whole person, seeing what you're sensitive to, like we talked about, and then finding the remedy. And then you can stay on your blood pressure medicine, start these remedies, and then as you start feeling healthier, you can go wean off your medicine and, and see if your blood pressure is still okay. That's how you do it. I feel fine whether I take my medicine or 
Okay, but you know what? I'm sure you have, everybody has some sensitivities. Maybe you have a little toothache, maybe you have some uh, diarrhea, maybe you have some irritable bowel a little bit, maybe you have a skin problem that's too dry, or maybe um, you have extreme cravings, or you get weak if you miss a meal. You know, those are the symptoms that I'm looking at. Are you sensitive to the heat, the sun, the, um, the change in uh, the room from cold to hot? Uh, there's lots of different symptoms that I would be asking you as a homeopath. I mean, if there's nothing there, then maybe you don't need the blood pressure medicine. <laughs> no, I don't know how, how bad it is, but there's usually got to be something there. Maybe some emotional sensitivity. Who knows? Um, what if, uh, like <clears throat> myself, I've had a cough now for four weeks, going on five weeks, and I have never had symptoms for allergy and drainage or anything like that. So I thought, well, maybe it's whooping cough. <laughs> okay. I, I've not had any, you know, <clears throat> fever or anything like that. So I'm wondering just um, what you do, the energy healing, does it um, address diseases? Of course it addresses diseases. Yeah, so if you have a cough, we say, when did your cough start? What was going on around that time? Did you try anything? Are you on anything new, first of all? Have you had any emotional thing going on? And then um, maybe it's just some genetic susceptibility that's coming to the surface now as you're getting up, uh, as you get older. <laughs> okay, uh, so, you know, have you had any change in thirst? Is there any change in... Um, food cravings, is it any change in your temperature of your body? And then when does the cough come on? When does it get better? Um, what kind of cough? Is it a dry cough? Is it a moist cough? Um, does it make you shorter? But what do you do when you have this cough? Do you cough really, really hard or do you have to lay down? You know, this is kind of, I need to know also, what does your tongue look like? I'll look at your tongue. What is your, I mean, you just look at lots of things and then you find a remedy that has a, maybe if you have a dry cough and it's better when you lay down, it's always fine when I'm in bed. It always goes away. It's, those are the things we look at. Okay, well, here's a remedy. And, it, you know, what kind of cough is it? Is it an annoying cough? Uh, is it a cough that makes you have a headache? You know, then we'll look at the headache too. What does the headache feel like? There's a lot of things. And, you know, when you have symptoms, you don't even realize. I'm a homeopath, and sometimes I say, oh my God, I didn't even think of that symptom that I had. I was putting some cold ice on my head the other day, and I said, oh, wait, I didn't even think of that. Because <laughs> you just do it, and you don't think, you know? So I make you think. It's okay, well, let's talk about this. How about this? What about that? That's how a homeopathic process is. And then we'll find it. There's tons of remedies for cough. There's tons of them. Okay, but we need to know the state of your cough. And if there's an etiology, that's easy. We say, okay, it's ever since you lost your dog. <laughs> Whatever, okay. A lot of things can affect our body. The energies from outside, the emotions, then the genetics, like I said, and then any physical thing, maybe a drug. You took lisinopril. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That causes cough. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I usually charge $300 for my visit, and that includes a two, three hour interview. And then, I mean, this is for a chronic case. And then I'll go through a lot of things with you, and then um, the medicine's included. I follow up with you, that's included. I see how you're doing. If you're not better, I say come back, get another remedy, that's included. Okay, so, uh, and then the follow up is just like $50. Uh, acute care, if it's really acute, usually my acute are usually chronic. They think they're acute, but they're not. It's like um, she might come in with a cough, but it's not a really an acute problem. It probably be, ended up being a chronic problem. But acute, really acute, like you just want something just to cover it up for a while, you, you, that's 75. But, you know, I, I really, it really takes a lot of time. Once I find all your symptoms, then I have to plug it into a computer program, then I have to think about it. And then a lot of remedies are similar. So you have to, like, get what is different about this case? What is it? Okay, so, so I, I can spend hours on the case if I find the remedy. I say, yes, that is it. I'm going to try this one, okay? <laughs> and uh, it's fun. It's fun because a lot of times it's, it can make you better on many levels. So when she comes in for a cough, I would say, okay, what about the other part, parts of your body? That's what I'm going to say. 
you know, what, what about your bowel movements? What about your tongue? Let me look at your tongue. But what about your urine? What about I mean, everything? I'm going to talk about everything. What have you had in the past? Because sometimes something that's suppressed can come back up. That's what it's all about. <sighs> Anything else? Any other questions? No? Well, thank you for coming. And I hope you learned something. The Knowledge Exchange is a presentation of Lakeland Community College.